Hello and welcome to Book Talks with Becca. I hope you're all doing well and aren't being driven too crazy by this crazy quarantine or stay at home order. All right, so today I'm gonna be book talking three really great graphic novels that I've read recently. Um, if for those of you who don't know, book talks are kind of like when you talk a little bit about a bunch of books and just kind of promote them and say why you like them. So the three ones I'm going to talk about today are Stargazing by Jen Wang, which was amazing. Saltwater Taffy by Matthew Wu and Jellaby by Keen Sue. All right, so first let's start with stargazing. I would say that out of the three, stargazing is definitely the one that's the most um, realistic because those other two are, do have fantasy elements in it, whereas stargazing is very much grounded in the real world and real issues. It focuses on a young girl named Christine. She lives in a Chinese American community with her mom, her dad, and her little sister. She's very much kind of like very reserved person. I wouldn't say she's shy, but I would say she's she definitely hasn't really broken out of her shell yet. And um, she plays the violin. So in the beginning of the book, she's at her church playing a violin. And she first encounters this other girl about her age named Moonlin. Now Moonlin is not as fortunate as Christine. She just lives, has her mom. And unfortunately, they are very close to becoming homeless. And so again, this book deals with really real issues. So since this is a very tight knit community that they live in that, and they want to try to help each other out, Moonlin's family invites, or not Moonlin's, Christine's <laughs> family um, offers to have Moonlin and her mother move into their guest house. So of course, the, now that Moonlin's living and very near to Christine in her guest house, of course, there's a friendship that's going to blossom there. What I liked about this book was in a lot of middle grade books, the characters already already have like built in friendships. So you don't get to see how how hard it is to make friends in that process. That is not the case in stargazing. So at first, Christine, everybody, so Moonlin has kind of a reputation among the other kids in this community for like being kind of like a bad kid or like kind of like a troublemaker. Like she gets into like, there's rumors that she had to leave her old school because she got into fights. And so Christine's friends are like, oh, you shouldn't hang out with her. So at first, Christine doesn't really want anything to do with Moonlin. Um, but eventually, Moonlin's her, she has this very like, she's very outgoing and artistic and exuberant. And she just, she just has this lovely, exciting, just amazing energy and personality about her. So eventually, Christine develops a friendship with her. And she looks to see past what other people say. And you know, more, and she starts to really make her own opinions of people and realizes that there's more to somebody than rumors about them. So due to this friendship, they, Christine really starts to break out of her shell and she gets, she becomes much more happier than she was before she knew Moon. But unfortunately, something is, is wrong with Moonlin. And I don't want to spoil it, but it's something very serious. And at 
first Christine struggles with this problem and she kind of like abandons Moonlit a little bit during these problems. And I think that this stargazing really does a great job of portraying like a real friendship you, from beginning to, to, well, not end because they keep being friends, but it shows, you know, not just the good times, but it shows, you know, the struggles that friends experience and how to work through them. And it's just a very beautiful book. The other things that I liked about the book were um, the great, the adults in it were really great. Um, this is not one of those middle grade or young adult books where the adults are just like not present. They're there. They're really supportive and they're of Christine. I love her dad especially. He's, he's very kind and nice. Um, since they live in a Chinese American community, Jen Wang does a great job of incorporating just um, different aspects of that food and culture and everything. So that was really cool. Um, if you liked this book, then I got good news for you. Jen Wang has this um, other young graphic novel for older um, people. It's a young adult graphic novel called The Prince and the Dressmaker, and it is very good. So I highly recommend this book. It's amazing. The illustrations are beautiful. The story is wonderful. And it's just a great story of friendship and family and finding yourself and, you know, just opening your heart to new experiences and new people. So hopefully we will reopen soon. And when you come into the library, you can check this book out. All right. So the next two books are that I'm going to talk about. They are diff they're not like stargazing because they're more kind of ground there's more fantasy aspects of them. And that's why I'm going to that's why I'm pairing these together. So first off, we have Saltwater Taffy by Matthew Liu. This book is just it's so great. It's just bursting with this creative creativity and energy and these characters are so quirky. Um, if you liked Mighty Jack by Ben Hatka, the Mighty Jack series, then you definitely like this. There's, um, it's one of, um, illustrations are kind of similar. The di big difference is it is in black and white. Um, and they're two male main characters, they're brothers. So basically, there's 11-year-old Jack Putnam and his eight-year-old little brother, Betty. And their mom and dad basically pack them up, pack them up, and they go to this very rural town in Maine for their summer vacation. And at first, the brothers are like, man, it's gonna be so boring. But they start to realize that this, this town has lots of interesting kind of quirks and creatures about it. So I, this is the second one, but you can read them out of order because I read the second one and it made sense for me. So the second story basically focuses on this, this um, kleptomaniac giant golden eagle named ba Bartimus. And um, so Jack has, is going on a hike with his dad and his dad is trying to, you know, impress him with some adventures that he's kind of embellishing. So his dad uh, creates this amazing story saying that he's the only person who's ever scaled this very high mountain in Maine and that when he got to the top, there was a giant, a giant eagle named Barnabas, and the eagle had an obsession for stealing hats, and his dad had to fight off the eagle, and he, he escaped with this wonderful hat. And so, of course, the two brothers decide they want to start wearing the hat. They go, off, they go out for a hike in Maine, and the eagle steals it. 
So the book focuses on the brothers going on a quest to find this eagle and get the hat back. And along the way, they meet a wolf named Dan who wants to eat the little brother. And they just meet these talking lobsters that are so funny that help them out. This book is just, it's so different, but I really liked it. I thought that just beyond the magical fantasy aspect of it, Matthew Liu does a really great job of portraying a realistic sibling relationship between two brothers. Um, sometimes at some points in the book, um, Jack just wants to toss, toss his brother to the wolves. But at other times, he is very protective of him. And when it comes down to it, um, Benny is Jack's biggest fan and his biggest partner in crime. And he loves his brother, even if they drive each other nuts. So this book is really great. I highly recommend it if you want something that's like a little silly, but also still a fun, nice adventure. All right. So the last book I'm going to talk about is called Jellaby by Keen Sue. I loved this book. And I think the reason I loved it was it reminded me a lot of Phoebe and her unicorn, which is another series that I really love. Um, you have this girl named Portia. She's a very modern girl. She's very, very smart, sassy, funny independent and she's kind of a loner um she has trouble fitting in at school with the other kids and it's just her and her mom so portia one day is she's having a nightmare and then she wakes up and she hears a strange noise and she goes outside and she finds this kind of like dragon creature thing, baby thing, and she names it Jellaby. Now, like Phoebe, Portia, um, Phoebe and her unicorn, Portia is, there's very much like the similar sense of humor. Um, you have this little girl who's very, very relatable and sassy and funny, who has this magical creature that she's friends with. And she just, this creature is really a sweet creature um it's it's a baby so he she she teaches him things and she takes care of him but as a result of her developing friendship with Jellaby it really it like how Marigold and Phoebe brought friends um it helped Phoebe kind of reach out to other kids Jellaby also helps Phoebe uh, Portia reach out to another, other friends. Um, although the one thing that is very, that this book is different how, from BB is that it does have more of like a linear plot. There's not just like, you know, episodic adventures. Portia wants to help Jellaby find out his home. And so she makes friends with this other kid in her class, Jason. And they go on a quest to help find, to help bring Jellyby back to his home. Um, there are definitely lots of positive messages in this book, like in the other ones. Um, there's lots of scenes where Jellyby really encourages Portia to break out of her shell and do things that, because they're the right thing to do. So there's a student who's getting bullied, and Jellyby gets Portia to just not be a bystander, but to really get involved and step in and just say, no, that's not okay. Um, I will say that this is a little bit darker. There's definitely a secondary mystery involving Portia's father. I don't want to, um, I don't want to spoil anything about that, but I would say that it's, similar to Phoebe and a Unicorn, but it has the darker elements of Amulet a little bit. So I highly recommend this book. I think it's so great and it's so cute and I am eagerly looking forward to when we reopen so I can get 
the second one. So again, the three books that I've talked about were Stargazing, Saltwater Taffy, and Jellaby. This is Book Talks with Becca, and next week I will be talking about all new books. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and let me know what you think about these books. Bye!